Welcome to my presentation plus. In December 2018, the New York Post reported that in a business meeting, you have just 27 seconds to make a good impression. My name is Diane Varlick, and today I'm talking about business presentations and those critical 27 seconds. I've been a communication specialist for 25 years. And you know what? I think 27 seconds is actually quite generous. You've in fact made your first impression before you even open your mouth. It's called presence. It's really hard to define. Some people say it's charisma. Sometimes it's just presentation confidence. But it is that indefinable something that makes people sit up and pay attention. If you're nervous about public speaking, that is actually a good thing. You are absolutely normal. But normal doesn't mean boring. So let's talk about what you should do to capture your audience's interest and attention in that first 27 seconds. You need your opening to be wow. They need to wake up. They need to listen to you. They might not realize it yet, but your big idea is a winner. You do not want to be one of those boring speakers that the audience stares at their hands because they're too embarrassed to look you in the eye. Or perhaps they are staring at their hands because they're on cat's Twitter. I would hope that if you've been invited to give a presentation, it's because you are really good at what you do. You know your stuff. People have made the time because they want to listen to what you say. They want you to succeed. Start off with that opinion. You are going to be amongst friends. Right, so T minus one, the day before. Decide what to wear. Red is dynamic, blue is calm, it's very professional. If you do want to wear black, try to add a bright tie or a scarf or a necklace. You need to make a statement. You are the speaker and they need to watch you. So really important, beforehand know how to get to your venue. You don't want to be nervous when you arrive. You don't want to be wondering um, if you can get there and how to get through the front entrance and where to park. The day before, you need to practice presenting to the dog and you practice your presentation right from the start, right to the very last sentence. Why do I recommend the dog? Well, I'm a cat owner and cats are a bit judgmental. That is not going to give you confidence. You need someone adoring looking at you with big dashing eyes. The other thing you can do is zoom with a human friend, but I don't recommend you record it. A lot of people record themselves speaking and it makes them feel uncomfortable. Every single person thinks that their own voice sounds weird. Right, 30 minutes before your presentation, uh, go into the room you're presenting See what the stage looks like from different parts of the room. Is anything blocked? Is the podium in the right position? Uh, where should you be standing? Where are the slides going to show? Have a look. Where are the aisles? And how tall is the podium? If you're a shorter person, you might need to step out from behind it. Very important, get to know your, the technology. How your laptop will connect you to their system. How to turn on the mic. Just practice it. How to hold the mic. Then take a break, leave the room, and go and chat to your audience at tea time. Go and make some friends. Um, and especially, I recommend making sure that the person who is supposed to introduce you is ready and has your information on hand. Right, you are five minutes before, you're starting to get nervous. You need to shake out your body, get rid of the tension just like a dog would do. Uh, if that feels uncomfortable and you have the space for it, uh, climb a flight of stairs. If you have to stand still, roll your shoulders, give yourself a, a, a hug. You deserve it. You are about to make a great presentation. Right, your 27 seconds is here. Okay, so you can't make an entrance if you are already standing on the stage. If you are busy setting up your laptop, return to your seat. Standing on the stage while somebody compliments you is so awkward. Um, so don't move forward too early. Right, so the person's doing the introduction. They're kind of getting to the end. As you walk across the room, acknowledge people you know in the audience. 
but do not begin speaking until the room is quiet. You don't fiddle with the microphone. You don't apologize. You don't say anything at all. Your speech has not started yet. You smile broadly. You nod to a few friendly faces. And make sure everyone realizes that nothing happens until they settle down. <sighs> don't forget to breathe. 27 seconds is actually 60 words. How do I know this timing? I was an advertising copywriter and that is a 20, uh, 27 seconds is about the time of a radio or TV commercial. And you know how endless those ads are. So please don't worry, you don't have to rush. So I want to go back to my opening slide. So if time is so short, why did I waste it on that very first line? Why didn't I just make a statement? You have 27 seconds to make a good impression. Well, firstly, there's a bit of a credibility thing. The audience doesn't know me yet. So I am borrowing a tiny bit of credibility by quoting the New York Times. It's important to establish your credibility in a speech right up front. But there's also a lovely thing. Be careful about jumping into your presentation too fast to be in a rush. You're speaking too quickly. It does take humans a few seconds to start to concentrate. So I provided a date and a newspaper reference. And actually, I did that twice. But I've now blocked them out of the presentation. How many of you remember what they were? So this is how I did not start this presentation. My name is Diane Bonnet. I'm really nervous. Uh, is this my con? How are you all today? I want to really thank you for inviting me. Before I start, I want to thank. These are not ways to start. Just start. Make your first sentence really powerful. So these are some of the things that you could say. Once upon a time, it's a great way to start a story. They've been starting them like that for generations. Today, I want to share with you my big idea, right to the point. I'm guessing the reason why you really hear is, and at that point, you mention what benefit they're going to get out of your speech. Did you know that? Do you ever worry about? Okay, so I know you're nervous at the beginning of your presentation. So you could try a non-verbal opening. A bang, pop a balloon, ring a bicycle bell. If you're really good with music, you could play a piece of music. Personally, I wouldn't recommend that. It's a bit nerve-wracking. <laughs> Whatever skill you have, juggle. Then drop the ball as part of the speech. It kind of gets things started. So now let's move to Zoom meetings specifically. Your background is really important. It is also important on the stage, by the way, but often your background will be uh, a nice slide presentation. Um, make sure there isn't a plant coming out of the back of your head. If you're showing too much of your room on Zoom, you can untick the Zoom setting for high definition, and there's a good chance you will get a four by three narrower view. The secret to life, Zoom, and the universe is good lighting. Ask any supermodel. Uh, if you are doing a Zoom meeting, face towards the window on the shady side of the house. That will give you the best, most flattering lighting. Uh, if you're older or if you Zoom a lot at night, have a look at one of these ring lights. I bought mine at Staples for less than $20. A very important part about being a Zoom presenter is get to know your computer, your Zoom software, and get some practice. Contact a friend and just try your timings and turning things on and off and finding all the bits and pieces. Okay, so even if you are a supermodel, only a cat looks good from when it's under the chin. You don't want people looking up your nose. If you're on a laptop, put it on top of a pile of books or get a tilted laptop stand so that you are looking directly in the eye. One 
easy way to look like you are looking at people, even though you're actually looking at your screen, is to sit back a bit. Show your hands and show your shoulders. If you look at uh, the gentleman here, um, he's showing right to his elbows and it means his hands are able to move and he can add gestures. He really has presence. So what do you do when you're giving your presentation to a bunch of black boxes? It often happens on Zoom. Um, and especially if some of the uh, speakers are not looking at you, they're looking at their phone, they're looking down, or they're quite obviously gone off to get a cup of tea. So my trick is I sticky tape a photo of my cat biscuit behind my camera. When I look at the camera, I can't help smiling because I adore the boy. So if you know that you are likely to have lots of distracting people in your audience, rather take control of the situation. Ask your audience to switch off their cameras to protect bandwidth for the whole community. But tell a few of your friends and your co-host to keep their cameras on and then you pin those cameras to the first page and that will help boost your confidence because they'll be smiling and nodding. Okay, so talking about co-hosts, if you do only one thing for, for your webinar, get yourself a co-host. They will handle the waiting room, they'll handle the chat. If people phrase questions badly or ask silly questions, they can rephrase them so that you get a, a question you can easily answer. They will run your polls and share your links. They allow you to focus on your speech and your audience. You don't want technology getting in the way. If you don't have a techie friend, there are actually people who offer a pro Zoom meeting setup and hosting service. Right, so your speech isn't just 27 seconds. So let's talk about what happens after this. Um, usually one of the best ways to start is with a challenging story. It could be your story, it could be a client's story, a colleague's story, even a famous person's story. But it has to be something that moves your audience from feelings and not facts. Emotion and empathy convinces. Unfortunately, facts don't. So combine your storytelling with your opening 27 second statements. Um, these are some openings that I recommend. When I started my business in 1994, I was working for. The year was 1994, I was doing X. I will never forget my the first time I did. I have a confession to make. I don't like to admit it, but something you would never guess about me is, these are all ways that you can get into a story about some past experience and that will not only start your presentation with something personal, it will also um, start to build your credibility. So you've made a great start. Everyone is on the edge of their seats. From minute two, you need to start answering the audience's questions. What are those questions? Why should they listen to you? What makes your message urgent right now? Why should they invest their time when leaving a webinar especially is just a click away? And by minute four of your presentation, you should be delivering what you promised and just keep on doing that all the way to the end. A strong close is really important. You need to remind your audience what value you delivered and circle back to your opening. That is the perfect way to do it. You need that strong finish. Never finish. Well, that's all, folks. My personal favorite way of finishing is, I'm sure that this topic has raised a few questions. I'd be happy to open this to the floor for the rest of the time we have available. That means you're not uh, putting your host out by finishing slightly too early. And if the host says, uh, oh, I'm sorry, you're right on time. You only have a few minutes, then you obviously know where you stand. It's, it's a very elegant way to finish. So since you are still here with me right to the bitter end of this, I would love you to add your ideas for good hope openings below this post 
Um, if this is on, on LinkedIn, add it to the comments. If this is on YouTube, um, mention it below. Thank you so much for joining me today and good luck for your presentation.